Hello everybody and welcome to See The Waves and in this video we are going to analyze Bitcoin. We are going to analyze Bitcoin through the lens of Elliott Wave Theory. Now um, the previous video that we laid out which was uh, in um, November, around November the 10th I believe, uh, at that time we were calling for Bitcoin to retrace back to 54,000 to 60,000. And it was this yellow box that I have painted on the chart. I've left that box up there. I haven't touched it. So that was the box that we painted for a retracement to take place under Bitcoin in our November the 11th video. Uh, and for the record, November the 11th would have been about right... Or November the 10th is when it was. It was right there. So at that day, we were calling for a little more uh, retracement back to Bitcoin. So uh, it has drifted lower, and the manner and the structure of which it has drifted lower still fits within the picture, the preferred wave count that we were looking at. Now, this is a smaller degree wave two, and it does appear that this smaller degree wave two could be over. So there's two main Elliott wave pictures that we're gonna be focusing on today from a big picture perspective. One is that uh, we are unloading in an extended third wave higher. So the extended third wave is gonna look something like this. So here's our wave one, here's our wave two, and then boom, we've got an extended third wave. Whoops, and that extended third wave, this is the beginning of that extended third wave. So that's the main Bitcoin Elliott wave count that we're looking at. Now the uh, other Elliott wave count that is an alternate to which we also have an eye on is that this could just be a large B wave. Now within the B wave, what we're looking for is uh, perhaps a WXY combination. So A, B, C, and W, here is X, and then we're looking for another A, B, C for Y. So the question is, is this the ABC or does this ABC do something more like this? Okay. And so what I'm going to share with you here in a moment is that if this were to be part of a larger B wave rally, then I think this is what that structure would look like. And either way, new all time highs are possible. And those all, new all-time highs uh, starting from near current levels uh, would, would certainly make sense within the wave picture. Um, one scenario that I feel confident that we can eliminate, uh, technically we cannot eliminate it. Uh, it's still possible. But one wave count that I would consider to be lower probability is that this was a double zigzag higher and this double zigzag terminated on November the 9th and that we are beginning a new larger down wave. I think that is lower probability. Uh, and this larger down wave you know, could carry down into the low 30s. I don't think we're there yet. If we are gonna see something in the low 30s, I think we need to see this first, where we uh, rally from near current levels, we move up into the 70,000 range, and from there we could be at risk to a dip down into the low 30s. But uh, right now, I don't think the 30s is a possibility until we see new highs. So those are the two main wave scenarios, is that uh, you know the first one, we're rallying higher in an extended third wave. And then the second scenario is that we are rallying higher in a WXY combination. So let's unpack these individually and uh, explain this a little bit further. So I wanna start off with the first one, um, that suggests we are rallying in an extended third wave. So uh, I guess we don't need all of those labels out there. So we'll just start with this. Uh, so what this suggests is that uh, this all, uh, previous all time high that we saw in April was a larger degree wave one. Then the summer correction was a larger degree wave two. And that now we are rallying and in this extended third wave, so we've got the first and the second of that third wave in place. And then uh, this little rally from the September low uh, then becomes a part of um, an, another smaller degree rally. So in essence, what we're looking at, if I were to map this out from an idealized perspective, we've got one, two, one, two, 
and then um, one, two, and then you got a three, four, three, four. So it'll be something like this. And within this schematic, we are sitting, let's see, one, two, one, two. We're, we're sitting at about right here. So as you can see, there's still a lot of upside potential under this wave model. So in essence, we are rallying higher in an extended third wave. And this extended third wave will go up here into circle wave three, circle wave four, circle wave five. So let me move these labels over here real quick. Yeah, so it'll do something like this. Of course, it'll probably be higher levels. Okay, so that would, um, you know, this rally here would just simply uh, take us up to, um, would take us up to minor wave three. After this minor wave three, then we would need uh, another correction in the minor wave four and then another even higher rally in minor wave five. So this is, uh, this is what that idealized wave count would look like. So as you can tell, this would be a, a monster trend. And I think we're getting ready to launch into this monster trend. We need to be aware of it. Uh, one way, that, one, one thing to keep in mind, and uh, been watching this on Ethereum, we've got a similar type of trend line taking place within Bitcoin as well. So I'm just simply going to match up these lows and look what we've got here. Real nice trend line. The decline that we saw has come in. It's tagged this trend line. We're getting a little bit of a bounce off of that trend line right now. So this could very well be that trend line that launches us higher in this uh, third of a third wave. Now, um, once we get to this point, you know, and, and we, we get all the way up here, uh, deep into the six figures, you know, maybe even upwards to 200,000 under this model, then at that point, Bitcoin would be at risk of a much larger correction. But until then, I think the corrections are probably gonna be contained in being less than 50%. If you like what you see here, go ahead, press the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn on all notifications. That way you'll be notified of future videos. And I know that 50% sounds like a ridiculous retracement uh, for, for being you know contained as less than. But uh, when you look at the correction that took place over the summer here, this correction, um, I think it was, it was about right at that 50% mark. And this is a larger, degree wave two that we saw down here. And so therefore, uh, the, the, um, the additional corrections that we see in the future, uh, so if this is a larger wave two, so if we have a one, two, and then if this is a larger three, then it's corresponding four, will probably have uh, somewhat of a similar depth of correction as this. So when we get to this point way up here, then that's where we could see that 50 to 60% retracement. But until then, uh, a 50% retracement, um, we, the, the corrections that we see will likely be less than 50%. So let's just measure out these two corrections here real quick and see how deep they've gone. Uh, so this is not gonna be exact. This will be a little bit of an estimate. So that one was a 26% correction. And then this correction that we're going through here in the last couple of days is about 20%. So yeah, I would say 20% corrections would be normal. Uh, now this guy right here, uh, this one could be a little bit bigger than that 20 to 25%, but I, I would suspect that this correction would be well contained within um, that 50% range. So uh, the point being, we're getting ready to springboard higher according to this model. This model will carry us well up above six figures. And once we get up into that six figures, uh, any or until we get up into that six figures, any corrections we see likely are gonna be contained well below 50%, you know, probably less than that 30%. Uh, when we get up here into this, uh, at the end of minor wave three, 
and when we are getting ready to work on a minor wave four, that minor wave four could see a larger correction that could make itself into that 30, possibly 40% range. Um, but then once we get up here at the end of minor wave five, that's where the bigger correction may unfold that may be in that 50 to 60% range. So that's the great news if you're a trader or an investor in Bitcoin is that uh, we should see this rally fairly soon and correct, corrective dips should be relatively tame and shallow from a cryptocurrency perspective. So this is, a, this is just one model that we're looking at. This is the bullish model. And, uh, you know, as long as we hold above this gray support trend line, this is a high probability. And this is the favored model that I'm looking at. So let me take a moment and I'll wipe out a couple of these things and share with you what the alternative bear model would look like. Okay. All right, so the alternative bear model, and uh, price isn't going to go quite as high, so I can zoom in a little bit more on this. So the bear model, now if you recall in the previous video, the one that, uh, or this, this vertical gray line, that's when we published the previously previous video, uh, price was trading, I think it was around like 67 or 69,000 at that time. But... Um, there was this pattern, this little blue thing. If you watch that video, uh, you'll, you'll recognize it. But uh, this little blue rectangle was a clue or a symptom that we may see a dip down to some recent, uh, to, to some new lows. And so it was this guy right here. And that's because what it suggested is that we saw a three-wave rally up into that high. Now, uh, a three-wave rally, most of the time, 90% of the time, is going to be corrective, and you're going to fully retrace, which we eventually did. And so that was the uh, that was the impotence behind why I was looking at that 54 to 60,000 was because of this three-wave move was a clue that this was a corrective advance, and that we were going to need another dip lower to shake people out to the downside. Now this dip lower did go uh, slightly below my 54,000 target, but it came down and it tagged that trend line uh, that's been in place since the summer of 2021. So, hey, it works out great. But if we look at this uh, from a bigger picture perspective, um, if you recall from a bigger picture perspective, I don't quite need that out there. And I don't need that out there as well. One of the possibilities is that this may have been a big ABC triangle. So you have A, and then you've got B, and then you've got a, a C wave coming up. You know, do something like this. So this is the bearish alternative. Now, the question is, under this bearish alternative, is this the high right here? or have we not seen it yet? And uh, so if you recall, if this is a B wave of an expanded flat, or if this is a B wave of a triangle, uh, the B wave of a, um, of a uh, triangle is gonna subdivide as a zigzag, a triangle, or a multiple zigzag. And in order for this to be a multiple zigzag, we could be looking at something where we have A, B, C, X, uh, this is ABCW, X wave, and then A, and then where's our B wave? Is this the B wave? Well, it can't be the B wave. It can't be the B wave because of this three wave advance. C waves are always five wave moves, except for the C wave of a triangle. So the C wave of a zigzag, it's five waves. The C wave of a flat is five waves, but the C wave of a triangle is the only wave that is not motive. It's not a diagonal. It's not an impulse. And so therefore, there's no way that this could be the C wave of a multiple zigzag. 
And uh, so what we'll be looking at is uh, something like this. So let me pull up my ABC. Now the degree of trend of this is going to be off, so pardon me. But uh, so this is what we're looking at. Could this be, you know, ABC like this? I'm saying no. Uh, it cannot be ABC because the C wave is in three waves. So that tells us we still have, if this were to be true, we would still have a C wave to come. Okay. Now where might the C wave go? And uh, actually, uh, before I get to that, where might the C wave go? W what if, could it be possible that this is my three wave move? A, B, and C. And the answer to that is no, that's not possible. That's not possible because after this ABC move, what is the next move? The next move would be a move lower in a C wave, okay, a larger C wave of a flat or a triangle. But the problem is, is this is not how a C wave of a flat or a triangle would start. So there, so this is not uh, the this is not an ABC. Could it be an ABC like this? And again, I would say no. This is not possible either. Because look at this advance up here into the final wave. This advance was a singular three-wave move. So this is not the case. So my point um, in sharing this with you is that this is, um, it, this is not a large ABC move like this. What is higher probability is that we're looking at something that looks like this. And, and let me go ahead and label this out. Uh, from a bigger bigger picture perspective. Now, again, the, the degree of trend is going to be off on this. So just uh, pardon me on that a little bit. Let me just move this down. So this is what we are looking at. Um, if, if this was a bearish alternative for Bitcoin, we would still need a rally that would most likely, doesn't have to, but most likely carry into a new all-time high. Then, after that new all-time high, then we could get a big correction that would take us down into the 30s. This is lower probability. It's possible. We won't know more about this until we get up into the new all-time high territory and see what the structure looks like and see what the corrective wave and how it unfolds. But for right now, um, uh, you know, we wouldn't have anything to worry about under this model, uh, not until we get up near all-time high. So, uh, so there's the two scenarios. Uh, hope that made sense. I know I got a little technical uh, into the uh, Elliott wave weeds, but uh, in my mind, this is fairly clear for Bitcoin. There are two main probabilities, uh, uh, models that we're looking at from an Elliott wave perspective. Both of them call for new all-time highs from near current levels. Now, I guess if I were doing some disaster planning and thinking about, well, what happens if um, what happens if Bitcoin were to just simply fall out of bed from here and you know start moving lower? What could that mean? Well, if that were to happen, it's possible that we could still be looking at that one two one two that uh, I was talking about in the previous um, at the earlier part of this video. That would still be possible, but it would not take us down into the 30,000s. It might dip a little bit lower, might touch the high 40s, you know, maybe like a 47, 48, 49. Um, but it wouldn't go much below that. Um, we might just get a false break below this trend line. Then I would, then we would probably get some rally from there. And uh, that's because of this three-wave move right here really sets the tone and it limits the options from an Elliott wave perspective as to what we may be looking at. And this three wave move does suggest that we are likely going to come up and see some new all time highs in the relatively near future. So that's all I've got for today. Um, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like what you see here. And we will see you in the future videos. Take care. Bye now.